In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Neo4j browser in your development environment. If you are using the Neo4j desktop, you can start the Neo4j browser application from the project, provided the database for that project has been started. You simply click on the Neo4j browser icon here in the Applications area to start it. Recall that when you start the Neo4j database, it provides you with information about the ports for accessing the database. The HTTP port on a local server is used for accessing the Neo4j database from a web browser. In our web browser, we simply specify localhost with the port 7474 to access the database. Notice that the UI for the Neo4j browser application and the UI for the web browser interface is pretty much identical. The only difference is the cloud area here, which you will learn about later in this video. You can also access the database running in a sandbox by navigating to the sandbox and clicking the link for the browser. For this video, I will use the web browser interface to the database that is running locally. In Neo4j Browser, you have various settings and information on the left that we will learn about later in this video, after you have seen how to execute some commands and cipher statements in the browser. On the right, we have two panes. The top pane is used for editing and running browser commands and cipher statements. The pane below the top pane is the result pane. This is where the results of the most recently executed command or cipher statement are shown. Notice that here, when we access the database for the first time, the command play start is executed. A command begins with a colon. A cipher statement does not. We type the command colon help commands and press the enter or return key. This executes the command and displays the result in the newly created result pane. If we type colon help keys, Information is displayed in the result pane about keyboard shortcuts. You can see quick help on cipher keywords. A very common cipher keyword you will use is the match keyword for retrieving data from the graph. If we type colon help match, we see a brief description of the syntax for using this cipher keyword. The most recent result is always displayed under the edit pane. The exception to this is if you pin the pane. If a pane is pinned, it will always stay at its position. Let's pin the pane with the result of executing colon help match. Here we type a different command, colon sysinfo. Notice that result of executing this command is placed after the pin pane. Let's unpin this pane and now execute the last command, colon sysinfo again. You can use the control or command plus the up and down arrows to select from the command and statement history. Here I am recalling the previously executed command. I can press the enter or return key or I can select the run icon here to run that command. The colon history command will display all of the commands and statements that were entered and executed. Rather than navigating up and down to find the command or statement you want to execute, you can simply click on a block shown in the history result. When you do so, it brings the command or statement into the edit pane so you can optionally modify it and then execute the command or statement. Here we will recall the colon help commands command and modify it in the edit pane to be colon help server. You can expand and collapse result panes. You can also delete result panes if they are not useful to you. A setting in the browser that may be useful for you is the number of result panes to display and the size of the command statement history. You can adjust these here in the settings where you can modify the maximum number of result frames and the maximum command or statement history to keep. Click the settings icon to collapse that part of the display. If you have many result panes displayed and you don't want to manually delete them, you can use the colon clear command to delete all of them. Even though you have cleared all of the result panes, you still have access to your command or statement history. Up to now, we have seen the execution of commands. 
Now let's execute a cipher statement to show you how the Neo4j browser executes against the database. When we first opened the Neo4j browser, the first command to execute was the colon play start command. The colon play command is used to execute a browser guide that can be used to step you through some content that may help you learn about Neo4j. The colon play movie graph command enables you to learn some things about Cypher using the movie database. For this demonstration, I will play the movie's browser guide. In a browser guide such as this, you can step through the pages of the guide. Here on page 2 is what we are interested in. You have not learned Cypher yet, but this large code block can be used to populate the movie database. In many of the guides, if you simply click on the code block, the Cypher statements are then placed in the edit pane. You need not understand this long block of Cypher code. We simply run this Cypher statement to load the movie database. The Cypher statement executes and displays a graph containing some of the person and movie nodes that are connected by relationships. When a Cypher statement returns a graph, it can be exported as an image or a CSV file. This result is displaying 17 nodes, 9 person nodes and 8 movie nodes, along with their corresponding relationships. This is just a subset of the data in the database. We can see information about the database by clicking the database icon here. The database contains a total of 171 nodes of type movie in person. It also contains 253 relationships between the nodes of these types. If you click one of these node labels, it automatically returns a sample of at most 25 nodes of the node type from the graph. If you click a relationship, it returns a subset of nodes associated with that relationship. In addition, the property keys specified here are the properties for the nodes and relationships. The nodes of a graph are displayed with a color coding. Here we see that all person nodes will be displayed in blue and all movie nodes will be displayed in green. If you click on a type of node, you can modify the color of the node, the size of the node, and which property will be displayed as a caption in the visualization of the graph. If you click on a relationship type, you can modify the color and size of the connection. In this graph mode, you can also select nodes and rearrange them in this result pane. If you want to focus on a particular node, you can select it and do things like expand all of its relationships in and out of the node. Or you can remove the node from the display. These actions do not modify the database, simply the display. Another way that you can view the results is as a table where A for actors, M for movies, and D for directors has been returned by the cipher statement. Another form of the result is as a plain text. And of course you can always view the code that was executed. Some cipher statements when executed will return values that are not a graph. Here I type the simple cipher statement match p colon person return p dot name limit 5. The result is not a graph but simply a table or plain text of the five names of person nodes in the database. We can rerun the last statement modifying it to return 10 names. If you execute a statement or command that has a syntax error, the browser will display the error in the result pane. You can delete the last result pane once you have identified the error, recall the last command, correct it, and execute it. Now when your browser session ends, all of the commands and statements that you executed are cached in the web browser's local store. How the local store for your browser is managed is up to you, but you cannot rely on the cache being available for your use, especially if you switch browsers or systems. As you are executing browser commands and cipher statements, you can save them to your favorites. If you click the favorites icon on the left, the favorites panel is visible. This pane contains some starter cipher code that you can adapt for your needs. In your development environment, you will most likely want to create and maintain a set of cipher scripts that you can reuse. For example, you may want to save the cipher script for creating the movie database. In our training development environment, 
we will use the movie database. First, we create a folder called Movies in Favorites. This will enable us to place all scripts related to the Movies database in this folder. If we decide to create scripts for a different database, for example, Customers, we would create a folder for those scripts. Now we have the pre-written Cypher script that we ran previously to create the database in our history, so we recall it and place it in our Edit pane. If we were to execute this script again, it would create duplicates of the existing data in the Movies database. To prevent this from happening, we place the following statement at the beginning of the script match n, detach delete n. You must place the semicolon after this statement because we want to execute two cipher statements, one to delete all the nodes in the database and the next statement to create the data in the database. Note that if you are using the Neo4j browser application, you must specify that you will allow the multi-statement query editor in settings. We execute these statements which will delete all data in the database and recreate the data. If we look at the database, we see that we have the correct number of nodes and relationships. Now we want to prepare this script as a favorite. At the beginning of the script, in the Edit pane, you add a comment which will be interpreted as the name of the script. Here we add the comment slash slash reset database. Next, we click the Favorite icon to add it to the Favorites. Here we see it in Favorites. We simply drag the script so that it is placed under the Movies folder. We are not done with saving our Favorites. The Neo4j browser, when run from a web browser, has access to Browser Sync in the cloud. This enables you to save settings and scripts in the cloud so that you can reuse them in different browsers and systems. To perform the browser sync, you must sign into the cloud using an existing account or by creating a new account. Once we are connected, any additions to scripts or changes in Neo4j browser settings will be saved or synced in the cloud. If you remove a script from Favorites, its removal will be applied in the cloud when you sign out of Browser Sync. Here we see the Clear Local Data button. This is useful sometimes when you need to clear the Favorites settings data in your web browser cache. If you open a web browser that does not have any cache data for accessing Neo4j, you can simply connect to the cloud to load your scripts and settings into your current browser session. This Neo4j Browser Sync is only available to the web interface and is not available in the Neo4j browser application that runs as part of the Neo4j desktop. For this reason, a best practice is to use the web interface for the Neo4j browser as it gives you the most flexibility. In future releases of Neo4j, the Neo4j browser application will include more functionality to manage resources. So that's a quick tour of using the Neo4j browser in your development environment. If you want to read more about some tips and tricks when using the Neo4j browser, visit the Neo4j user interface guide in neo4j.com developer.